All right, everybody. This is day 219, Make It Songbringer. And today I'm going to be working on the overworld a little bit more. And today I'm creating gates. So I want certain areas of the overworld to be blocked off. For example, let's say like air, levels 6 through 9 need to be sort of behind some sort of gate, which uh, is enabled to be opened via an, uh, an item. So, for example, a gate might be um, a gap where you just have to blink over it. So you teleport a short distance over the gap. Or maybe a, a gate is also a pile of rocks that can be bombed to be cleared. So here's what I would do if I were doing if I were doing it how I exactly preferred. You can see that here, this is the world that I'm currently in right now. And this is the sort of the eastern half of this world. And you can see that a lot of this world can be put behind that one, these two gates right here. This yellow gate right here and this yellow gate would block off a good deal of the world. You would also need to block off right here as well. So this is kind of what I would prefer to do. What's up guys? Hey, what's up? Arcane, Momir. Oh man, I don't know this one. Hey guys. <laughs> uh Yeah. So anyways, yeah, this is um this is this would be a really cool advanced sort of gate system, but I don't think I'm going to have time to create this kind of algorithm just yet. So so this is sort of the simpler version of doing gates right here. This is um, the same level, same world. But you can see that level 6 is behind a gate. Level 8 is directly behind a gate. Same thing with 7 and 9. So these are all directly behind some sort of gate. So that's the simple version, right? It's really easy to do that as opposed to this sort of advanced version where you would put it a whole section of the world behind the gate, which would be preferable. I do. I would like to eventually do this. What up, coin? Welcome to the stream. So yeah, I've actually gotten most of this started, the code to do all this. So um, the way it works in the dungeons is to create key levels and or key conditions. And in, um, I've got this set up, so behind, it basically checks every level on the overworld, every area on the overworld, and decides if it's, if it's right behind, right close to a level entrance, and it's above a certain threshold, it adds a key condition to that door. So essentially, like this, this is an example right here, this level six, this one right here, this area just to the right of it, this will have a key condition on both the doors or both the paths that are going to the west. And I've got that confirmed, so this works here. Um, and now all I need to do is create some sort of pattern which will place this actual gate there. And I'm pretty sure this is all set to go. In fact, um, yeah, so let's just start writing the code. Um, I'm gonna loop over all the doors Yeah, pretty sure it was doors, yeah, doors. All right, so each door has a direction or a destination. I believe there's a function to get the compass direction. Ah, this is a, probably a simpler way to do this. I'll loop over the directions and then get the door for that direction. Yeah, so we already know the direction. Whoops. So for each compass, or for each, yeah, compass direction. No, we don't want to do all the compass directions. Wait, so this was, um,
So let's do for each star. For each star, D, compass star. It's going to be D shifted up one. So that's, yeah, D starts off at zero, and that comes to be south. We should line up with the south. Yeah, so southwest, northeast. Yeah, southwest, northeast. Cool. That'll work great. So now let's get the door. And now we'll test its key condition. So if Door key condition. Hey, what up, mightiness? Man, the wedding was great. Yeah, I gotta say, best wedding I've ever been to. So cool. They had a bluegrass band, um, awesome food, beautiful location, so sunny and nice, but yet still kind of in the mountains in Southern California. Great wedding, man. Good memories. Some of, some of our closest friends, too. So it's just such a beautiful time to see. And, and also connect with lots of old friends, too. What's up, Alex Pita? Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm working on, so if you guys just join in here, I'm working on this gate system. Professional novice, what's up, man? Yeah, food, awesome food is definitely a must. Yeah, good food, good music, good times, good friends. Everything was amazing. So this is where um, I'm, I'm at right now in the world, is right here in this bottom left. And I'm placing a gate between on this path for to get to level six. So you've got to be able to cross this gate using one of your abilities to be able to get to level six. So that's what I'm working on. And um, I've almost got that. I got part of it done already. So um, if door dot key condition is greater than zero. So this door has a key condition. In fact, let's go up door connect key condition equals zero. Then we'll just continue. All right, now, so we know we have a key condition. And we want to place Let's just for now, let's just play place bushes or trees, bushes I guess will work, yeah. And we'll just place some bushes if there's a key condition going this direction. So, depending on the direction, we have an X min and an X max, Y min, Y max. Oh, this is, yeah, dungeon level. Sorry. Yeah, dungeon level. So, yeah, this is the player getting to dungeon six is going to be behind a gate. Same thing for nine, seven, eight. And then also, th like, three, four, five, these ones will also be behind a different type of gate. What's up, finest gold? Welcome to the stream, man. So, I'm going to loop over X min to X max, Y min to Y max. And for West, this is going to be x min equals 2, x max equals x min plus 3, uh, y min equals 0, y max equals height minus 1. Okay, there. So we've got west set up. And let's do the loop now. I know I need to do all the rest of the directions here. Good, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I'm glad that interests you because that's a really cool, important part of game development that has really simplified the way I make games is using components. So awesome, man. What up, Jonah19? What's up, what's up, what's up? I'm working on gating off the overworld. So for example, 
to get to Dungeon 6, you'll need to cross over some sort of gate which you'll use an ability, like for example, your blink teleport ability, you'll, be, you'll use that to get over this one place. Like for example, I'll show you where I'm at in the world so you can get, get an idea. So that's what I was talking about is this here, I'm on this screen and one to the left here, this is the entrance to level six or dungeon six. So right here, there's gonna be some sort of blocking pathway thing so that you'll have to blink over it. In fact, I need to give the player the blink. So let's give him let's give him the fire blink. Cuz that one works well, so does the regular blink. Okay, so we've got we've got the X-Men X-Max for this west. Um, now we can loop over all those. Uh, I think I'm gonna change my mind. I'll make these less than X Men X Max. Oh yeah, MC Finest Gold. If you want to do programming for Windows, there's um, Visual Studio. It's also free. It's a great product. You should have. If you're doing development, I mean, Visual Studio is going to be pretty much one of those things in your cache of your cache tools. Your tools, it's a good tool to have. There's also Ming, Ming on Windows. There's lots of there's lots of free open source compilers out there, so you definitely don't have to use Xcode. Yeah, or just Clang on Linux for sure. Clang's awesome. Clang's really really good. Okay, and what's at the tile type? So, I think we'll do a bush for now. And then this is, we're just gonna say, oh, if this is an open path. Um, <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, it's probably there, man. Did you try your start menu? Your programs menu? If not, you can just directly navigate to it. Alright, so this is an open path at X, Y. I guess we can include, no, let's not include the interior. There, okay, let's see if this works. Uh, you just directly navigate to your program files. So you just go to program files, Microsoft Visual Studio. Yeah, it worked. Check it out. We've blocked off the path right here. Let's make sure that no other paths are blocked off around here. So, like, yeah, like this area, everything looking fine how it was. Cool. That's awesome. And we should be able to teleport over that. Oh, that's not supposed to happen. Should never be able to teleport. How did that happen? That's so weird. Teleported in the. Wait a minute. What if he. Okay, so I haven't moved. Huh. That was really weird. You guys saw that, right? He landed on the bush. Can't seem to make it happen again. Huh, well,
Uh, well, you can only download the community as far as I know. Enterprise, well, I guess you can get code as well, but Enterprise is the expensive one. Code is not as featured, uh, from what I understand. Community is the one that you probably want. Spam it? Yeah, good try, Asmus. I mean, good thought. Huh, I was spamming it there. Oh, that was it. Okay, it was while I was entering the screen. Okay, wait, so I was halfway across the screen. Ah. Good call, Azarus. So if I let it go all the way, and then I go, it, it, it works. But if I spam it while, yeah. Okay. I'll write that one down for later. Smapping. <laughs> Spamming. I just seriously got dyslexic right there, actually. Anyways. Spamming the um the blink while flux sliding can lead to a Blink into static tiles, something like that. I'll just do that later. Okay, so let's handle the west, the rest of these um, different directions. Oh yeah, it does actually. Yeah, it would be cool to have one of those. So wait, I was wondering, does the stylus for the iPad Pro, does that work with old iPads? Or is this new stylus thing only for the brand newest iPad is Proist thing? Nice, man. That thing does look pretty cool. I gotta admit, that stylus looks rad. How do you know there's something behind the bushes? Because your inner explorer wants to take you everywhere. Check it out. If you're going to be exploring this world, it works with all. Oh, that's cool. That's even better. I would just buy a stylus and use it with my iPad Air or whatever that uh, the iPad I have is. So check it out. If you're right, if you're in this screen. Actually, let me let me illustrate this even better. Um, this is what it would be like if you had come here without fully exploring, right? You haven't been to this screen yet. Hmm. So you're here, you're looking at your map and you're going, oh my God, I haven't been to that screen right to the left of here. What is this? <laughs> Is that something cool? Oh my god, I don't know. So you're there, you know, you can walk all around it, you can go up here and you can go, hmm, maybe I can get to it from up here. Nope, no path at all. Down there, it must be something across there. So I guess, I guess you have a point in that maybe these should be different types of, maybe they shouldn't be bushes, right? Maybe they should be something else. You know, so it's a little clear that you're supposed to do something to get over that. Yeah, I guess I could do different tiles. Uh, but maybe not. Oh, is it right? <laughs> I think it would be I think it would be a little bit more apparent if this were if this were some different kind of tile. Let's try it out just a simple thing like trying a statue tile instead. I don't know if these are going to all fit here correctly, but these should definitely look different. Right? I get your point. There should probably should be some slight even if it's subtle, but a different kind of cue. 
that this is something. Hold on. I'm tired of having to select the fire blink. So yeah, if this, yeah, I, hmm, I think this is the way to go, to use some, some type of tile like this, it's not, not your average tile, so maybe we can do a different kind of tile for that. You like the bushes better? Interesting, okay. Huh. Jib could say something, hmm. Huh. Good ideas, you guys. Boogie, what's up, man? So I'm working on these things called gates. These things are on the overworld where, for example, to get to the dungeon six and you're on this screen, there's a tiny gate which allows, which basically forces you to have to have a certain item to get across that gate or to open that grate. Oh, okay, so the pencil is only for iPad Pro. That figures. That definitely figures. Right, why would Apple release something awesome and new without it being tied to their awesome new thingy? So yeah, here's a gate which requires your blink ability to cross it, right? So you have to have blink to be able to get past these statues or whatever. But yeah, so I'm playing around with different tile types right now, so maybe... I had bushes here at first, and that's kind of a really, you know, it's it's not very obvious that there's something that could be crossed. Now I've got these, you know, crazy statue tiles all piled up on each other. Hmm. Huh. Ah. So... What is the vinyl verdict then, huh? All right, so uh, let's do the east one. Let's check out these other ones before we do a tile type special. So we'll do east and west. With minus five. Maybe six, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what that should be. Well, let's find an area where we would... Um, ah. Oh, yeah. Hey, what's up, Meladin? Your follower gets stuck in the statues. Are you talking about Jib, the robot? He doesn't get stuck anywhere, actually, right now. He just goes through everything, so he can... <laughs> I need to actually fix that up so he can actually collide with stuff. But right now I've got him so he doesn't, so that he's he never ever gets lost. But uh, yeah, that's on the that's on the to do list for sure. Hey, what's up, Liv? Welcome, man. Welcome all y'all. Cool. Okay, so yeah, it's confirmed. The iPad Pro stylus is only for the iPad Pro. North would be X Men Zero, X Max Width, Y Men North. Uh, y Men is going to be height minus five, Y Max, Y Men plus three. Yeah, yeah. What happens if you reappear in the middle of the statues? Boogie, good question. That was just happening a second ago. What happens right now with the game is if you ever get stuck in a certain place, like you you're you're you shouldn't be able to walk on statues, or you shouldn't be able to walk on bushes or whatever. If for some weird reason you do ever get stuck, it temporarily removes the mask for that that movement collision so you can actually just walk on it so if you could, if you actually end up 
on water, for example, you can walk on water for a second. If you end up on bushes, you can walk on bushes. <clears throat> but to, but in the end, all of that needs to be fixed. That's that's definitely a bug in my mind. So I would I would do everything I could to fix that so it just never happens, basically. Oh, Alex Pita, cool idea, man. So there's already an idea that you, you could get an item to be able to understand Jib. But I like your idea of finding multiple items. Here it is, the Babble Fish so you can understand Jib. Or multiple items that gradually translates some of Jib's letters. Cool idea. Man, I'm good, dude. Yeah, I just had a nice refreshing weekend. What up, Vlad? What's up, Lynn Penzen? Good question, good question. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. But don't let it discourage you, man. Don't let it discourage you. Just take it as a learning lesson. Move when Once you finally fix it, you can move on. And you've learned something that will enable you so that you don't ever have to repeat those, those kind of weeks. That's right. Babblefish was your idea. We need to credit these ideas. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Cool. Really cool idea. Yeah, the mini one's cool. I got the air one or whatever that is. It's pretty nice. I love the, I love, retina is my favorite thing, man. I, can, I don't think I could ever go back to not having retina on my displays. Retina here on this, I'm using a MacBook Pro with retina and shh change my world visually like visually I can see so much more so this would be y min equals two all right there we've got all these set up now let's go warp around the world and we'll try out some different spots so that one's east let's do this one eight is north so we need to be at six five five seven or five, uh, five, six. Oh, this is kind of a weird one. So I just threw these on the path, right? And they're too high. Ah. Okay. Um, what happened there? North height minus five. Oh no, let's try seven. Oh, I know what's up. This is using a different type of, we need to use a different type of tile because the statue tiles are um, they've got twice the height or something like that of normal tiles. So yeah, that's what it would look like with some regular tiles. Oh, we can't warp that far. Yeah, that's actually one of the plans. That's an idea. It's having little warp points. And in fact, what um, what I had originally planned was for you to be able to get a second set of teleport cubes. So like you 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 start off. Whoops. Sorry, I refreshed the chat window. Force of habit. Control R. Command R. That's all my fault. Anyways, you got this uh, this thing, the teleport cube. And this allows you to teleport to your counterport part cube, which is on your ship Songbringer, right? I wonder why you can't use it here. Oh, because there's enemies. 
Ah, these are enemies. So yeah, you. I was thinking you'd be able to get a second pair of teleport cubes and then be able to place one somewhere and then warp back to it. But also maybe there are some straight up warping portals. Oh. Well, that's an idea. Yeah, no, I haven't actually thought about Jib's backstory yet. I like your idea here, Alex Pita. That you, you can find him broken. That's really cool. Yeah, I like that. Hmm. Could be the AI of the AI of the ship. That's funny because the first plot I wrote before I changed it to all this plot had to do with AI. Probably because I was totally inspired by red versus blue. Uh, Lith, Jib is the little, yeah, robot guy, yeah. 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 Uh, Felix, uh, I didn't get the, the controllers to work with Cocos 2DX. I'm using an open source library. Cocos 2DX does not work with game pads, except on for Bluetooth ones on iOS and Android, which is kind of meaningless when you're on Windows, Mac, or Linux. But I'm using um, an open source library called OIS. And here's the link. This is what you want to do is get something like this and also compile this because this will allow you to use um, game pads, Windows, Mac, and Linux. So. Yeah, Coco Studio X definitely needs to add this support. I don't know why they haven't done that yet. Cause it's basically it's basically because they focus more on the iOS and the Android, the mobile version. Coco Studio X was first a mobile game platform, and then it expanded and became Windows, Mac, Linux, and all these other ones too. So these are going to need to be maybe one less. Let's try those with only. Two or zero, one, two, three. Sage, do I remember who called me R R D J yesterday? Was it you? Sorry, I forget. I forget so much. Yay! Now it works. But it seems like I can warp over all that if I wanted to. Yeah, I know I could. I could be the one to check it in, huh? Uh, yeah. But I don't want to. <laughs> I've submitted so much so I've submitted so much to the to Coco Studio X already. But anyways. The thing is, it's like they sometimes they approve it, sometimes they don't. And then sometimes they have the other these other ways they want you to do stuff, like you need to go write it as part of their SDK box or whatever their newest plugin format is. And then if you're the one to create it and submit it, they're going to be the ones like going, hey, you need to update this. It's basically a hassle. And I want to write a game, not write it, not write plugins and stuff. Yeah, thanks, Peter. Uh huh. I haven't. Wait, which Castlevania is this? Is this Aria of Sorrow? This one looks good. Yeah, I totally agree with you. This would be cool. Uh, you can call me whatever you want, man. Yeah, whatever you want. Wiz is great, Nathaniel, Matt, Nate, whatever you want. Really? 
GLFW has controller support? I didn't know that. Oh yeah, it was somebody, yeah, I don't forget, I forget who was, who was calling me that. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Alright, it is, yes, I just started playing it, that's why it looked familiar. Cool, Aria of Sorrow, that's, a, that's probably my favorite one that I've played so far, but I haven't played the one, um, what's, there's this one that's like, what is that, that one? <laughs> what's the one for Sega, right? Isn't there one for Sega, no, not Sega, but for PlayStation? That's so weird. Maybe it can't fit there. Maybe it needs to be height minus six. Yeah, Symphony of the Night. Yeah, that's the one. I haven't played it, but I really want to. Oh, yeah, no worries. No worries. Yeah, cool. When building a code portfolio, what do employers not want to see? Man, you are asking the wrong person. I've only had one job. No, wait, I guess I've had two two jobs in the, in the programming industry. I've mostly worked for myself. I've mostly been, had my own business or done my own thing, so. Oh wow, that's weird because this is this is giving that. Uh, yeah, I guess two is a, two is just a better thing to go with here. We'll do two. What up, Peen Wally? Really has has funny voice acting. Oh, yeah, that's that's might be one of them. No malware programming, right? Hey, what's up, Marza? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all. That's also was uh, Vlad suggested that too. He's saying basically you could have some, some puzzles that would be tied to Jib's language. And you're saying items, so yeah, kind of the same thing. Puzzle items. <laughs> uh. All right, let's check if see if south works and and uh, east. We need to check that one too. So let's hope we got. Here we go. Nine is going to be at east. So this one's going to be uh, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen, six. Thirteen six. Well, this must not be thirteen six. Oh, maybe I meant twelve six. Yeah, twelve six. Okay, that works. Mm -hmm. All right, so yeah, this this gate looks good too. Yeah, that works. There you go. Yeah, Marza. Yep, I'm placing gates. So check it out. Like, um, here's the world, right? I'm placing the levels behind some gates. So, for example, I was just there at level 9, and I went back a screen and made sure there was a gate there. that, And the gate could be any, like a lot of different types of things that would require an item. So this type of gate is the blink ability, right? So you need the blink to be able to blink over, teleport over those, those tiles. Another one I have in mind is the bomb. So you'll need to actually bomb some rocks or whatever to get out of the way. So you need to have acquired the bombs by that time. Here's how I would prefer to do the gates, though. Eventually, I'd like to create a better algorithm 
so that basically like this whole section of the world right here would be behind these two gates. You would also need to, to gate it off right there. So I need to come up with a better algorithm that could do that. That would be pretty sweet because then, then it would kind of be like you're, it's not like you're just throwing one single thing behind a gate, but yet a whole area requires the you to acquire, um, you know, that item or whatever. Yeah, totally relative stuff. Yeah, being honest. Bomberman bringer, yeah. Bomb the bomb the bomb the gates. The only one we have to check now is south. Yep, yep, I get that all the time. I got that yesterday, actually. Uh, okay, um, let's, if we were to go south to get to a level. Wow, none of the levels on this world are south. Let's try a different world. Yeah, we'll turn on overworld scene. We'll give it, I don't know, we'll change the last letter to something. Let's see if we get a world where there's a, a level entrance that's south. Oh yeah, there's level three is behind, six. All right, cool, six is behind one. Good level, sweet. All I need to go is to zero, one. You can check this out. Oops, we got to turn off this world thing again. Cool. It would be nice if this actually picked up on what's around it. So like instead of these being bushes right here, it'd be nice if this was water. In fact, I'd like to do that. Let's do that next. So we'll start doing that. Good question, good question. Oh, member seven. Yeah, what's up, man? I remember you were asking about that the other day. Thanks, man. Yeah, there's a lot of thought going into actually how the world gets procedurally generated. So, yeah, I don't, I, I'd say I'd probably spend a few months just working on this, these algorithms, and implying how that affects the world and creating tiles and creating patterns for tiles and stuff. So, thanks, man. I hope this game turns out awesome and it feels like you're playing Zelda 1, but yet it's different every time you play it if you want. That's really the goal. What up, Duty Ba? Yeah, I do make the sound effects, um, but uh, what, how, I, how I make sound effects a lot is I just basically take samples from freesound.org and then I'll go and mess with them and make them a little different. So freesound.org is pretty much where I go to start with on every single sound like so I just I searched for grass I think and I just found some a sample that I that sounded pretty good and then I chopped it up a little bit so to make the walking in the grass sound uh are you talking about spelunky or is it spelunking yeah I, I, I've seen it but I haven't played it you're talking about spelunky right Or is there an old is there an older one called Spelunking? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you meant Spelunking, right? Or Spelunky? Oh yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, Alex Pita for sure. That's uh that's on the list. In fact, I've already got some of that done. The ability, at least for entities, to have weakness to ice, fire, things like that. Poison is going to be another one. There's already the poison sword, so I need to do, yeah, status effects. They are on the list, man. Yeah, this one's a little different, though, right? Can't you actually dig through and pretty much modify the entire world? Like, watch this. He's going to blow up a bomb right here, and that's going to change the world. So it's a little bit easier on them to create a world like this because they can, you know, they can they can morph the world. They, the player can change the entire world if they, if they're stuck. They can change the world basically. But yeah, this is a this is looks like a great game. I've heard it's awesome. Yeah, totally. It might be. It's true. It is true. Look at um Sage, have you seen, you know, you've seen Hyperlight Drifter, right? Hyperlight. Whoops. Oh man. I'm just opening all these crazy windows here. Firefox. I didn't want you Firefox. Um Hyperlight Drifter is totally made in Game Maker. And one of the dopest games I think I've ever seen. Hey, they changed their website a little bit. Oh, you don't always have dynamite. Oh, okay. <laughs> Really? They released their source code? Wow, that's awesome. Is it on GitHub or something? Yeah, totally. Yeah, Axiom Verge. Um, Children of Morta. I have a whole list of those games. That's probably why I don't remember. Because I made a list, so I just like offloaded it or whatever. What's the game though you're talking about? Oh, it's Belunky's Source Code, that's right. Oh, okay, so they, wow. Good for them. That's cool. Zeo Drifter. Uh, Toby Peters. Yep. Are you talking about my game? Yeah, it runs on Songbringer. Runs on Windows, Mac. It's also gonna run on Linux before it's out, and on then after that, it'll come out on iOS. Maybe Android, maybe PlayStation 4, and maybe Xbox One. <laughs> it's crazy. This thing has the same sort of um, bright, highly saturated colors that... Hyperlight Drifter does. Lots of pinks and purples and stuff. Cool. Is it fun? Hey, what's up? So mental, the game's coming great, man. I'm working on this little system right now so you can actually have gates. So, like, behind a certain gate... A gate is something that a lot... That blocks you from crossing it until you get an item so for example until you get the blink item you can't cross this gate and get to this level here so that's basically what i'm doing right now so my next step is to make it so this gate right here uses the tiles around it so instead of being bushes this would actually be a water gate
Oops. Cool. Awesome. I'll have to check that out. Maybe I can learn something and make my game a little better. Ah. It has a Super Metroid feel. Sweet. Sweet. Cool. Ah. Ah. All right, so we'll go um, to where it does this pattern, and we'll choose what kind of tile to use. Yeah, that's what that's what I've heard. People have told me. I'm not I'm not entirely entirely def definite on that or whatever, but yeah. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna count. I'm gonna count all of the tiles in that same strip. So there's a strip of area where your the 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 gate is being applied. So I'm gonna go and count all of those tiles in that strip before this ever happens, and then we'll find the highest one. Oh, cool. Right on. Uh, okay, so, well, this is pretty easy to just go, um, counts, get tile, so I wonder if I can do the actual sorting part of it here in the same What? Huh? What? Huh? Dude, look at this. Xcode's jump to jumping in the wrong place this is totally the wrong function. God, man. God, what's up, blah, blah, blah. What up, Wilski? What is up, man? I'm working on this thing where you can uh, get to certain areas of the world only if you have a certain item. So, for example, this is the entrance to level six or the dungeon six. And right here, to the right of it, there's a gate. So there's like a just a strip of land where you can't walk across it. You have to blink across it or teleport across it. So that's what I'm working on now. I'm just making it now to where it improves the style of the gates. Yeah, of course, man. Show us your sketch arena. That's totally a tile type. I'll get it. Oh. <laughs> Man, I've been messing up my my chat window today like crazy. Sweet, man. Cool. Who's this guy? I'm guessing he's a good character, but he looks pretty he looks pretty gnarly and awesome. Yeah, is he a lizard man or is he just like a... Who is he? Where does he come from? What planet? Looks awesome, man. Oh, he's a seer. Wow, cool. Ah. 
Sweet. Awesome. Travels with his mind. Oh. Duh. That's supposed to be tile type, not item type. Okay, so now we've got a count of all types of tiles. Um, I think we can do this. We can go... Um, yeah, if... Oh, let's go highest count. Yeah, that'll work. Highest count. Sweet. Right on. That sounds like he's going to be a sweet character. Motion captured. Nice, man. I definitely want to see some more. I think the last thing we saw from you is your cool um, robot thing. You made. By the way, everybody, Wolski's a great artist. I'm pretty sure you just noticed that from seeing his sketch. Sweet, so we've just put the, the whole sorting algorithm into the same function. There, now we can, we should be able to, I'll see if it worked. Yeah, you are, yeah, you are. One day, like today, is today good enough? Hey, it worked. Check it out. We got a nice water, um, a water gate. Water gate. It's water gate all over again. Hey, sweet, man. Rainbow wolf. Oh, oh, he's asking about, uh, Wolski, um, he's asking about if you want to make art for his game. For Pierre. You should share another link, bud. There we go. We got a place gates method. Looks pretty good. There you go. There you go. What up, Kaz the gamer? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, so now we know that South works. Um, let's go back to the original world we had. And let's go to that original place we were at, and we'll see what kind of strip of tiles it did there. Oh, it did water here. Ah, that's because most of these tiles are water near it, or there's a there's a greater majority of of water tiles in that strip there. I guess that works. 
it also kind of makes it a little look a little more distinct too. Like you're like, oh, why is there this this little patch of water right here? Yeah, I think I like this. I think I like this. I think there was the plan, the idea to do a different type of tile, but I think I like it better this way. It's a little more inconspicuous, just like uh, you guys were saying. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Wilski. Cheers, man. Yeah, it's getting better, right? The art's getting better. Okay, let's go back to these other levels too. So, like, um, let's make let's ah, yeah, let's go. Level nine. We'll try that. Let's see. What is this again? Fifteen, fourteen, thirteen, twelve. 12.6. Yay, it works. Cool, man. Oh, is this broken? Or did I, I go to the wrong area? What happened? Oh, oh, so good thing we checked that because that just revealed this flaw right here. So we can't store this type of tile as a prevalent tile if it's none, of course. Cool. Guys. Helps to test things, right? All right, cool. So this time it used some bushes because they are the most prevalent tile around here. Let's check some of these other areas. Seven, eight. These ones are seven, seven. <laughs> Did this one work? I don't know if this one worked. Yeah, that one didn't work. Okay, we gotta figure that what's up with that. Sweet. I like this sexy chick, man. She's super sexy. Uh, oh, nice job, man. So is, is, I'm assuming this is a side scroller or is this a, a battle game? Looks cool, man. You got some good um, mock-up art already created too. So I'm assuming it's gonna be vector art and stuff. Do you have any unique concepts you wanna add to this type of game? I mean, you don't have to tell me out loud, but like it helps if your game has some kind of unique concept, you know? Yeah, like Castlevania, sweet, awesome. I like it, man. I like it. Nice. Right on. Cool. Yeah, I think that's pretty important. Really important thing to have. Uh, okay. So what is preventing this thing? Let's check it out.
Yep, day 219. Hey, True Sandwich, what's up, man? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, what's up, PMC? What's up, you guys? I'm working on this today. I'm working on these uh, a system of gates. So, for example, Dungeon 7 will be behind a gate that requires an item to cross it. So, for example, the Blink Orb allows you to teleport forward a few steps, and that can get you across a certain little gap. So I'm adding gaps and preventing the player from ever accessing level 9, 7, or 8, like at the very beginning of the game. You need to acquire this item to get that far in the game. So, Nano, what's up, man? You got, is your birthday yesterday? What'd you get, man? Happy birthday, by the way. A Wacom? Nice, man. Yeah, sweet, dude. Oh, that's awesome. You already know some code, right? So you're you're like you're on your way to learning how to make games, man. That's rad. Alright, here's that area. I wonder what happened. Wait, that first one. Okay, here's the here's west. Good. Okay, we got a door to the west. Hey, thanks, man. PMH. Thanks, man. Appreciate you saying that. Really, it's cool. You got. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. Yeah. Right on. Oh, you broke your computer? What'd you do that for? Oh my gosh, I remember I actually purposely broke one of my computers one time. When I, when I left this one job making games at this one place, I was like, I'm gonna break my keyboard. So I went and just, I guess I didn't break a computer, but I broke my keyboard and it was fun. I dropped it off a two-story building and it totally broke. <laughs> it was so, so, Liberating. What's a good PC configuration? What you mean? Okay, so it's working, right? We got tile bush. We got West set up. The current tile is rock. Count is zero. This tile is none. Should be continuing, yeah. None, continue. What happened there? Oh, we we're done with that X slice. Uh, parts, yeah, parts like that's kind of a uh, vague. I'm not sure what you mean by what parts. What kind? Like you're talking about your CPU, your motherboard. There you go. And it, yeah, and what what do you you want to do Windows? And I'm I'm assuming. Oh yeah, because you said PC. Um, man, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't done that in so long. I've, I've been using apples for years and I'll never really go back to using Windows or PCs. Because I got Unix, man. Oh, there's two. On and off. <laughs> Uh, at first I was like, wait, what does he mean? Oh, I get it. I get it. Okay, I'm curious as to why this, this is like, not working. 
Wait, what's X Men? X Men two, X Max five, Y Men zero, Y Max twenty. That's correct. That's totally correct. All right, we've got a count of two for Tile Rock, and that's going to put the highest count to two, and the Tile once again to Rock. Oh, you know what? It might be this bit. If you run all the way to here, then oh, okay, Tile's Rock. Oh, no, look, it is saying a tile. What? Hmm. Yeah, two story building. Oh. Oh, no. You, you did? You threw it down the stairs. Oh, that's so funny. I mean, funny and not funny. I mean, it's. I guess you purposely did it, but yeah, crazy man. Well, now so now you got a you got a new computer. Then I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah, it is. I know, I know, but most people call PCs when they say PC, they mean Windows. Really, I okay. Check this out. It's setting the tile x y zero. Yeah, this is totally setting all these tiles to rock. All right, what's up? How could it have set all those tiles all here in this soul strip to rocks and then all of a sudden you get in here and there's no rocks? I don't get it. What, okay, what if we don't do rocks? What if? the tile type like if we do bushes instead oh no oh man spectacular for sure oh look it worked okay this is very curious why would bushes work and then rocks wouldn't and why wouldn't it work right here in this little strip here? This is definitely a good one to check. I'm glad this one is being checked for sure. Oh, can, I, can I warp across that gap? Oh, look at that. That's cool. It's a pretty big gap. Okay, we gotta figure this out. Yeah. Huh. Where did I learn to program? I learned from books, my friend. Books. Yeah. Finest gold. PMC is asking you what language. Maybe, but nah, probably not because the tiles are all created before the mobs are created. Oh, sorry guys, I just reset the window again. Apologies, apologies. So yeah, it, it first creates these tiles and then it creates the mobs. So it's probably not that, but that's a good thought because it, it makes sense. So this is an open path right here. It's pro. It, mm, mm. I'm 
thinking it has something to do with the order in which it's done. Let's just put it all the way at the end. Hmm. Yeah, that didn't have, that didn't help at all. What the So curious. So it wasn't that. In fact, I'd, yeah, I'd prefer for stairs to be last there. Uh, no, sorry, there's not. The only the only customization is that you can choose between regular mode and permadeath. Permadeath means when you die, you're dead forever. You can't continue that game. It's a lot like Zelda 1. Zelda 1, there's no such thing as hard or easy mode. It's just whatever mode the game is. And I like that. I, 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 like, I don't really particularly prefer games that give you an easy mode. Because when you start the game, it's like, okay, what do I choose? I'm about to play this epic quest, right? This is a long-term game. This is something where you get in and you can play six to nine hours. I never really liked games that had an easy mode because it's like, which one do I choose? Do I choose easy or do I choose normal or do I choose hard? I have no idea. Uh, so that, that, that moment of choice creates um, sometimes hesitation in a player's mind. So that's why I don't prefer to have the easy or hard modes. But I do like the idea of having permadeath mode because permadeath is pretty clear. It's like permadeath. You know, if you got you got to be hardcore to choose permadeath mode. And as far as character customization, no, uh, this isn't meant to be that way because it's like it's meant to be a game with distinct characters. So um, you know, some games, yeah, like like for example, Dark Souls. That's a game where you totally can get rad with your cus character customization, create your own kind of character. But the the downside to character customization is that you're not creating a distinct, memorable character for the player that everyone can refer to. So Dark Souls, who is the character? Nobody knows, it's you. It's whoever the hell Dark Souls character is. But Zelda 1, we all know it's Link. You know, that's what this game is meant to be like. It's, so the char the main character here in this game is Rock, and he's meant to be very, very distinct and memorable. So that's, that's sort of a long answer to your questions there, but I hope that made sense. Yeah, the road roach, cool. Man, this is a curious one, right? Do I just do I fix it now or do I just fix it later? I think I'm gonna fix this one later. Uh, no, I do have to fix this tonight. Here, I'll just I'll add this to a different difference, like um. Okay, so I can get, I want to get these other types of, of um, gates working, these rock piles that you can bomb. Alright, so let's continue on by checking some other areas. Let's try this one. This one is, uh, this one's 7-7. Seven, seven. This one would be 5-6. Oh yeah, this is going to be another one where it's a little bit... I don't know if this is the right, um, right, this one's going to be kind of crazy. So it's putting bushes here. Oh, let's turn off, uh, this. Yeah, sweet, man. The theory that Link is dead. Is that like a game? Oh, 
Oh, and this is kind of weird too. It's oh, because it's underneath this gate. So I guess this is another area where I've got to really debug that, figure that out. So um, um, Yeah, so these two, just adding stuff to my list, but stuff I got to get done. What's up, Jacob? It's going, it's going really, really good, man. Cool, man. I'll check this out. Link is dead. Link's dead. What up, Fung? Yo. Okay, so that one looks weird, too. But let's try another one. I already looked at nine. Okay, let's make sure that three... For example, three and five, these are pretty important ones to check if they, let's go to here. This is six or seven, eight, nine, nine, six. Uh, Z Twitch, this is just me, man. I make the, I do the code, the music, the sound effects, the art, the marketing, everything. Okay, once again, we have these totally blank, so it's like, huh. Oh. And I wonder if those are static tiles. Whoa, let's, let's check that out. All right, man. Yeah, double BC warrior. Nice. Okay, so I'm going to turn on draw debug mode. We can see if this is actually... Um, yeah, okay. We want, Okay, I got an idea. So maybe it's static tiles. They're getting actually used for the gate. So if T is tile none, or T equals K tile static, we shouldn't be using those. Er, er, er. Oh, now it didn't work at all, though. Huh. That's weird. Oh, that makes sense, though. Oh, that totally makes sense now. All right, man. What? Okay, so it's, we should be ignoring the static tiles, but we should still be picking up rock tiles. So by the time it gets to here, Hopefully this explains what's going on with this, these bugs. Act cute monster, will I give you an intro to my shaders? 
Yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of explain what's going on with them. Sorry, but I'm not going to share any actual code for the shaders. That's kind of one of my secret sauces. Um, yeah, so let me, sorry, let me get this out of this whole state. I got to turn off this and turn off debug mode. What got me into coding? I wanted to make games when I was in high school. I really wanted to make games, so I just, um, I started. That was it. I started reading books. I read books on the C language. I actually had a, before that, I had a, a computer class where they taught us quick basic. So, um, shaders, check it out. I'll, I'll give you kind of this kind of intro. This is how it all began. I'm going to take a screenshot. So my whole goal for um, creating these shaders was to create a Photoshop-like effect. And if you want to go back into my YouTube videos, there's um, tons of, there's several videos where I was doing this live. What do I do in shaders? Um, yeah, I'll show you. So um, the first thing I wanted to do with the shader was to take the world and make it look more. I mean, this already looks pretty pretty nice because it's got some darker edges over here. It's sort of a spherical or not a circular type shape. So what I wanted to do was to create a layer that created some levels. So check it out. If I add some levels to this, you'll see what I mean. So levels can really, really make your game pop, right? So if you kind of like lower this and then and then this one too, you squeeze together the actual heuristics of your your color band, your color your range of colors. Can I use Unity? Yeah, but I prefer not to. I prefer open source engines. What's up, Voice of Grog? What is better to do with shaders? Uh, I'm not sure what you're asking there. Um, what what do you what you do in shaders, and what you don't in terms of effects? I guess here. I guess I could show you the really the simplest way would be to turn off all the shaders. Yeah, yeah, true sandwich, yeah. Yeah, Vlad, yep, you can init the game with any six letters. That means there's 300 million possible worlds. Oh. All right, well, maybe this helps too if I turn off the shader, and you can see what the shaders do that way. Um, sprite, blend... Do blend equals false. Yeah, so here's the game without any shaders at all. And you can see what the shader is doing basically by comparing this to the other screen. So. Let's take a well. Let's put the player back in the middle, and we'll compare these two screenshots. So, here's without the shader. Here's with the shaders. You see how it brightens up the middle by applying a slight bit of levels. See that? Here's the here's the game before. It's kind of dull a little bit. It's kind of flat too. You're not really seeing much um, darkness on the edges or brightness in the middle. And then once again, we turn on the shaders, and it looks a lot brighter. And you can see a cool sort of circular or spherical type of radial gra gradient 
going across. And there's also other effects that are being used there too. There's um, several different layer styles that are blended together. So what I did when I first created these shaders, is I created it all in Photoshop. I was like, okay, here's what I want to do. I want a bit of multiply. I want a little bit of screen. You know, I, I, I basically played with all these types of effects until I got something I really, really liked. And then I, I went, I set about creating a shader that would look exactly like that. And I found some cool posts on Stack Overflow about how to do shaders that look exactly like Photoshop blending layers, and that's what triggered it all. So that's hope that answers your question, man. Uh, should I ban this guy? Worldly hell, worldly Eskimo. If you're not a bot, you should say so soon, because I'm I got my finger on the ban. Ba 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 ban 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 ba 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 ban ban ba ba ban. Yeah, you're welcome, man. Yeah, Vlad or Flood. Um, that's a good idea. And there's this is already on the list too, for doing uh, Easter egg worlds that are based on certain letters. So, but I'll definitely put your um, I'll put your idea in there too. Uh, Z Twitch, yeah, I'm standing. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Maybe he's Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> uh, Rainbow Wolf. Here, let me get you the this the Steam address. You can you can buy it right now on songwearer.com slash pre-order, and that gets you your name in the credits too, and on the main menu. Um, or you could just uh, wait for the game to come out and you get um, you get it on Steam. Here's the Steam link. All right, cool. I'm gonna kill this worldly Eskimo thing. Oh no. Well, Voice of Grog, what's up, Ethan? Voice of Grog, maybe this is some inspiration. I don't actually have a standing desk. This is just me inside. I'm using a closet top, or it's the top of a closet shelf where I put my laptop, and then I just connect it to an external keyboard which sits lower at my hand level for like, you know, on some boxes. So literally, I do not have a standing desk. I just made a makeshift one. So maybe that inspires you a little bit. And I mean, you know, get some two by fours together, you can make your own desk. <clears throat> awesome, man. Yeah, there you go. DIY standing desk. Good job, man. And welcome to the stream, by the way. Cool, good for you, Ethan. Okay, so I'm gonna turn back on blending. Um, what was it? I had on draw debug is one. Um, oh, and then turn on debug mode, and let's get back into this debugging this code. Figure out why. Why this one gap is not coming out right? Why is it? Oh yeah. So once we get to this point, we should have a tile. What's tile? Yeah, we have K tile rock. Once again, K tile rock is totally messed up. Oh, nice, right on. Do I use a mat for like standing on? Um, no, not currently. If that's if that's what you mean, but uh, yeah, I just I stand. I just wear shoes, and that's kind of like my mat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how long can I stand? Um, usually for maybe two to four hours a day. My last video game project I actually worked on, I actually stood all day long. So six to eight hours, ten hours even, I would stand up. It takes a lot of breaking though. You got to break at least like once an hour, stretch your legs, move yourself about, get your blood flowing and stuff.
Uh, how long are these streams? They're about two hours each. And if you ever miss a stream, they're all on YouTube. So all these links are here on songbringer.com. But um, here's the YouTube. If you if you ever miss a video or you want to go back to maybe even day one, every single day of developing this game is online. It's all here at this YouTube address. Uh, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna cost sixteen dollars, and it's there at Songbringer pre-order if you want to see that. Okay, um, so what's going on? Why is Tile Rock not working? Right. So if, let's see. What if we did this? Like, what if um. If we go if tile equals k tile rock, then we'll just do k tile equals k tile bush or whatever. We'll turn off debug. Let's see what happens then. Do I know of a software to time lapse your screen? Yeah. No, no, I don't. But I I wrote a script that did that a long time ago. You can actually do on Max. You can actually write scripts to do that. Yeah, see what what the hell's going on? If I do um, rocks, it doesn't work. And then if I do bushes, it does work. So weird. Uh, yeah, yeah. Coco Studio X kind of does force you to program a certain way, a little bit. Yeah. Um, but not not really and if you if you um, It's actually gotten a lot better Coco Studio X has gotten a ton better just in the past few years and I actually wrote a whole book on it So if you're like if you're interested in learning Coco Studio X or whatever, here's my Take on learning Coco Studio X. I highly recommend it. It's pretty good It's just getting way way more pro in the last like year or two. It's gotten a lot more pro Especially with version 3.0, it got a lot better. And then all the subsequent 3.x releases have just gotten even better and better. Yeah. But yeah, I hope that helped a little bit. I think it's an excellent C++ engine. Uh, yeah, with the beard, right? Yeah, so I don't. I, I, I had some... What Are you talking about Windows or Mac? I'm sure there's... Did you do a Google? Did you, did you Google that? Okay, what could be possibly causing rocks to fail like so hard? Hmm. Huh. I don't know. I don't know right now. Yeah, sorry man, I don't use Windows, so I don't I don't know. But I'm sure there's software out there that does that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I hear ya. I haven't used either of these myself, but uh Hey, I, I trust you if you're saying it doesn't really cut it for a cross platform. Cross platform is so important these days, you know, you gotta be cross platform. Okay, so there's not really any need to debug this anymore. I, I know what the problem is. The problem is this rocks not working. What if these were light pillars?
how am I able to start a certain point? I just set it here in the settings. So this is a save file, has my settings, and I just set the point that the player's at. And then I've got some code which checks like if um if you're not in if you're in release mode instead of debug mode. So if I if this was a release game, then it wouldn't allow the player to do that, allow you to change your position like that. So yep, it works great for debug mode and then also for, for release mode, it's already set so it doesn't allow the player to do that. So it's all good. Is this a place to learn how to program? I guess it depends on how you want to learn to program. What up, it's Suds? Okay, well... At least I've narrowed it down. That's good. so weird the rocks just don't work but I'll figure it out later I'm gonna keep on pressing on with these other areas so I wonder if this one will work now so if we go back to 7-7 seven, seven. Yeah, so the 7-7, seven, seven, this part of the bushes don't even work. Hmm. Oh well, I'm going to keep it going. So I'll fix those later tonight. Um, I'm going to start testing. So this area, oh, it was behind a level, wasn't it? Let's check three. Three should have nothing. So this should be, this is eight, five. Um, I'm not sure how to say your name. Hi, free. Hi, free. Anyways, man, sorry, I'm not really using OOP. I'm using something totally different than OOP called um, Entity Component Systems. Um, personally, I don't recommend using OOP for creating games anymore because Entity Component Systems have really simplified the way I make games. In fact, this game is so much more simple. Um, just because this is used as an entity component system. Um, and I actually published the entity component system on GitHub, so if you want to see it, here it is. Okay, so that one didn't have a gate. Let's figure out, um, so I'm going to enable these breakpoints. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. All right, man. Okay, so what level is this? Flag number. Uh, an entity component system is not for any type of language in particular. You can write your own entity component system for any language. Um, if To give you a very simple example of what an entity component system is, you go download Unity, check out Unity, go run Unity, go do a few simple tutorials on Unity and you'll find out that everything in Unity is components. It's all about components. Like here, you have light components and render components and all these things that you, the, they compose an entity, 
right? An entity can be broken down into different components. For example, in this game, um, if I just run it, you'll have to see, you can see what some of the components are in this game. Um, there's a render component, which is the, which draws the sprite for all the characters. There's a move component, which handles the movement. There's a collision component, which ha handles like how you can't walk on this tile here or these bushes or how you can collide into an enemy. There's an attack component when the player attacks play, uh, other entities. It uses the attack component to define, you know, what's the attack box for north, south, and all that. There's um, a shadow component, which adds shadows to entities. You can see this pillar has a shadow. There's a reflection component. See how the player has his own reflection here in the, the water? So breaking up your, your entities in your game into components and not using object-oriented programming, oop, is it greatly simplifies everything. It, it greatly reduces the amount of code that you have to write for a game. What's up, Thomas? Yeah, totally. That's the one I used. Um, that's the one I used to learn how to make this. And this this article right here is the one that inspired me to write Entity Foo, which I just shared the link for. Thomas, this is what I'm working on today. I'm making um, gates. So, for example, like level seven right here is behind a gate which you need an item to cross over that gate. So there's like the blink orb is an item which allows you to teleport a short distance. And you need that to be able to get to level seven, eight, and nine, maybe even six. No, not, not really. I, I guess in a way, yes, you could say a class, but class implies that you there are su super classes and subclasses, and that's not at all the case with entities. Entities are composed, not derived. You know, see what I'm saying? Entities are wide, classes are deep. I hope I hope that makes sense. But when you learn more about programming and stuff, you'll it'll all be like pretty easy. So, or not pretty easy, but just like you know, it'll make more sense if you when you think about it a little bit more. Uh, what's up, Hawkeye? Um, what would I suggest for an absolute beginner at game development? I have some great suggestions for you. Uh, I have experience with C Sharp. Yeah, more beginner friendly, I would recommend Pi Game, Game Maker. But here's what I recommend for all game development beginners. This applies. It doesn't really matter how far you are in your game development career. Actually, these these videos I'm going to recommend here are pretty much apply to everyone. Why did it open it in that window? Come on. Oh man, what's up with Safari today? Safari's on its own Safari. Yeah, check out these videos. This is these are by Extra Credits. Amazingly good videos on game development and all. Look at look how many awesome videos they have in this series on game design and creating your own games. I ha I would highly recommend going through every single. Whoops, sorry, wrong link. I would highly recommend going through every single one of these videos. How soon can you get fire in the game? Yeah, see, it doesn't, it doesn't, if I add gates that are fire, that's a cool idea, I like that. Um, I can put fire wherever. So it doesn't, it, right now it appears, it may be in the second or third dungeon or first dungeon even. It's, it's a little bit randomized there. So yeah, I can all, I can make sure that, yeah. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, simplicity is king, man. Simplicity can really help you keep your design of your game, your actual code, the design of your code for your game, very easy to figure out because I, I don't know how many times I've been high or drunk or whatever and come back to my code and gone, what the hell? Why did I do it this way? Or, or like, you know, how did this, this even work? Or it's the same thing if you come back to your code a long, long time later, like you're maybe you come back to a piece of code a month later or three months later. And then simplicity 
is the thing that's going to save you. Yeah, you're welcome. Can you get a team license? You don't need a team license. It's entirely open source and free, man. Coco Studio X is completely free and open source. It's MIT license. It's the most liberal open source licensing there is. Yeah, totally, man. That was running. I don't know if that's still running or not, but that was like last week, right? They had the pro license for 12 bucks. What kind of Mac do I have? I have I have a late 2013 MacBook Pro Retina. It's awesome. Solid state drive, super fast. The only thing that's the only the only downside to it is that in hot months and like when when you're or when you're pressing your GPU pretty hard with like using it playing a 3D game for example is just gonna make your fan go crazy and it really heats up. So yeah, these things get hot, but if you keep your if you keep it to not running 3D games and stuff. You're okay. Free as beer. <laughs> All right, man. Cool. Yeah. Just that's a that's a great place to start. Don't worry about where you are at compared to other people. Just keep learning with your own stuff. Check out those videos and follow your heart, man. Remember to follow your heart. Yeah, yeah, he's got a great answer for you right here. Source control, man. Git. That's how you get two people working on something at the same time. And talking. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for helping out answering some questions, you guys. I'm really trying to get this fixed here, or at least check out, make sure these conditions work for all these doors. So let's turn back on debugging. And I want to make sure that all these doors are right. All these gates are correct. So, um, N, we got N, the flag number. N is six. So, level six is the first key condition. See, here we got level four. Oh, this is behind key condition one. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. All right, cool. That explains why level three is okay. So we need to turn this off and this off. And we want to do um, in this area pattern where it creates all this, this strip of tiles or whatever, we want to check out the key condition. So we I don't have any tiles I can bomb yet. So let's see if door key condition equals one, then it continues. So that would make that so that level four wouldn't have. I think I'm just gonna keep it out yeah, like this for now. So let's just do this. One type of gate. There's only one type of gate. So if it's key condition one or zero, it's gonna skip this for now. And we'll put, uh, let's test it out by making sure that level four or five or six. So for example, five, that's a good one. That's a nine, six. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm still on Dingle. Yep. Okay, good. So this time we have nothing here. No rocks. Okay. This is good. We got this started. What? Man, PMC, I don't know if I agree with that at all. Do you believe him? I think that's the most important thing, is if you believe your teacher, or if you truly believe in yourself inside. 
do what's your desire say? What do you, what's your heart say? What do you really want to do with your life? Yeah, yeah. It, that it does. Uh, Unreal is a is also C plus plus is a great engine. Um, I th I would say I don't know. It depends on what you prefer, whether it's more difficult or not. It might be. Yeah, definitely. I recommend giving eng all engines. Give them a try before you even start. Before you even settle on a game engine, go try out at least five game engines. You know, try them all out. There's you can get all these free trials or whatever for all these engines. And Unreal and Unity are even free now, right? For most small teams. So, dude, you're good to go. Trying out everything you can, and then once you find one you can you like, you settle on that, and then start doing some tutorials and stuff. Yeah, the blueprints are pretty neat, right? Man, looks like I've used up my two hours here on my live stream. So, um, pretty much this is it for the game for today's stream. I'm gonna um, recap what got done today, and then that's gonna be it for today's stream. So, basically, what I was working on today were gates, and I got a good gate system started. So basically, behind like a a, um, a level can be behind a certain gate. So let's go to level this area right outside. Um, whoops, oh, sorry, it's going to be zero or one zero zero. This is going to be right outside level six. And this is, um, oh man, now it's not even working here. Oh no, level six is, is going to be gate or key condition one. So we want to at least go to level seven or eight or nine. So let's just go level nine. So this is uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12, 6. Yeah, so this is what got done today, these little gates. So this is like a, you know, and that's a, that's just a, a term, you know, gate or whatever. But yeah, this is something you need an item to cross. So for example, there might be an, uh, another type of gate where you have to set off a bomb. So you would like set off a bomb and then it would blow up some rocks or whatever. Or, you know, you burn some bushes or something like that. So basically it just requires an item so that you, you would use to cross it. And so this is an, this requires you to have the blink ability to get up here to level nine. So yeah, that's it for today's stream. Um, if anybody is just joining the stream, this game is called Songbringer. And I stream pretty much daily, so I'll be back again tomorrow, um, usually between 2 and 4 p.m. Pacific times when I start. So thanks again for watching, everybody, and um, appreciate you all.